What's that? The coding train is pulling into the station? <laughs> yes, it is. And um, it's bringing with it vectors and a Levy, a, a Levy flight. So I'm gonna, in this video, well, that sound effect ended, thank goodness. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. Um, in this video, I am going to expand on my previous random walker example, and I wanna do two things. One is I want to bring in the concept of vectors. So instead of having a separate x and y variable, I want to have a, a variable that keeps that x and y together as a vector. And this is going to allow me to um, be a bit more flexible about how motion works and, and kind of uh, play with the, random, the quality of the random walk a bit more. I am also going to add something called a Levy flight. So there are so many ways you can vary the probability and quality of a random walker, and I hope that uh, maybe some of you have already done that and shared some of your variations with me. Uh, a known concept, a, a, a known technique is something called the Levy flight, and what the Levy flight is modeled after, so something that actually happens in nature, sharks and other uh, large sea animals, and maybe Birds of prey and different uh, hunting. What, what, what a lot of these animals do looking for food is they'll look around to try to find something, to hunt their prey. If there's nothing there, then they'll take a really long step and go somewhere else and then make smaller steps to look around. So instead of, unlike the current random walk <laughs> that I have, right, this random walk can only ever move one pixel and it never suddenly jumps. But what if this random walk looking around for, you know, berries, because it likes berries, but there's no berries over here. Let's go all the way down here and now look around and see if you can find berries, and then come all the way over here and now look around. Wouldn't it be great if it would just draw as I did that? I'm gonna get that working someday. Uh, and go around and go here and go up here. So this is one of the things that I wanna add to this. How do I vary the probability of the step size to forage for berries? What's your favorite berry? Mine is blueberry. Although I have this like acid thing and I'm told that I'm not supposed to have blueberries. Melon is good. This is off topic. Okay, so let's look at, first we're gonna and make this easier, let's add vectors to this. Okay, so what is a vector? Now first of all, um, if you wanna do a deeper dive into vectors, I, you know, I'll link to my uh, playlist from the Nature of Code playlist, all about vectors that you can look at. Um, and also the Cadenze course that I mentioned, I'll link to it here, which is an online course, uh, not on YouTube, but has videos for free. I look at vectors in JavaScript, which is probably more relevant to this particular videos, video. My, my ones on YouTube are using processing in Java. But anyway, what is a vector? So I mentioned that the random walker has an x, y position, right? And I, I probably shouldn't draw this arrow here because the thing that I'm gonna use to demonstrate vectors is an arrow. <laughs> so this right here is an x, y point. So a vector is an entity that has both magnitude and direction. So typically that is drawn as an arrow. Its direction, you can think of it as the sort of angle of orientation. I'm just thinking about vectors in 2D. The idea of a vector is actually just essentially a list of, of values in some dimensional space. And this is a big thing in machine learning and all sorts of, but I'm thinking of like a very simple idea of just a vector in two dimensions. It has a, mag a direction, its angle, and it has a magnitude, the length of the arrow. Now the components of a vector, this is the idea of a vector, it's this arrow that's long or short. The components of it are a displacement along the x-axis and a displacement along the y-axis. So the way that you can think about this point as an x-y is actually a vector that points from the origin to that part, point. So if you needed to travel from 0, 0 to where that spot is, you would need to go a certain amount of y and a certain amount of x, and you would be there, and the vector positions you there. Now, a vector doesn't have a particular location. A vector is just this entity. So we could also consider each step to be a vector. So before, when we had the random walk, the random walk could only ever move up, right, down, left. And this is sort of the formal definition of like the classic random walk. But um, I'm going to do a vector random walk, meaning it could go one unit in any given direction. And then that vector, its length could be variable. So what is the probability of it moving one unit versus moving many units? And this is how we're going to get that Levy flight. Okay? So now I'm going to do my vector random walk back to the computer. This is a random walk. <laughs> okay, here I am. Um, okay, so let's go to the code and start implementing some of this stuff. So basically what I want to do is I want to get rid of my x and y, and I will instead want to say, I'm going to call it POS, pause for position, and instead of setting x equal to 200 and y equal to 200, I'm going to say pause equals create vector 
200, 200. So this function in P5, create vector, just makes a vector object. A vector object that's part of the P5 library. And now I have this vector object in pause, which has an x and a y. And just so we can see it, I can say like console.log pause. So we can take a look at that, what that object looks like in the console. <laughs> I can't type. Ah. OK, now what I want to do is instead of drawing the point at x and y, I want to draw the point at pause. But the point function and the ellipse function and the line function, they always expect the separate x and y values. And I can access those by saying dot x and dot y. So a vector is an object. And objects in JavaScript have properties that you can access by saying dot the thing. Pause dot, pause dot. Pause dot song, no, maybe, maybe, not really. OK, so then I could also just say, hey, pause dot x equals pause dot x plus 1, pause dot x. Oh, I'm going to do this in a faster way. I kind of want this video to like speed up right now. Pause dot x, pause dot y, pause dot y, pause dot y, pause dot y. And now I should have exactly the same program. If I refresh, we can see it's doing exactly the same thing. The random walker is moving around randomly. And um, you can see here, here's my object. My object is a P5 vector with an x and a y. By the way, it has a z. So at some point, I'm going to come back and look at doing a random walk in 3D. The vector object in P5, also in processing, has a z built into it, but I'm just ignoring that fact right now. And if I type in the console here, pause again, I can see these are its current values. That's where it is right now, 178 and 214. OK, so that's pretty good. Now actually, though, I'm going to do something. Here I'm saying there's only four options. One, two, three, or four. Zero, one, two, or three. Move to the right, move to the left, move up, move down. I'm going to just radically change this completely. I'm going to just take all this code out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var step equals. And what I want right now is a vector that has a length of 1 and points in any given direction. And there's actually a function in P5 that will give me a vector like that already. It'd be interesting to discuss how you calculate a random vector using just the random function. But I don't need to, because I can say p5.vector.random2d. This is a little bit of a weird syntax here. So why wouldn't I just say, you could sort of say, like, why isn't it just something like this? Something like that, right? Why isn't there just a global function, random 2D vector, that gives me, like, there's a global function create vector, right? Create vector, why isn't there create random 2D vector? Well, there could be one, and P5, the library, could be implemented that way, but to be honest, there's a bunch of functions associated with vectors that aren't so commonly used, and they would really pollute, in many ways, the simple P5 reference that has the core functionality. So some of the functions that are associated with the vectors are actually inside of the sort of namespace, so to speak, of the P5 vector object. And you want to go to the P5 vector reference page, which I'll link to in this video, to find the documentation for this. So to make a 2D vector, I've got to say p5.vector.random2d. And then guess what? Now what I want to do is say pause equals pause plus step, right? Because what I want to say is have a random step and then take a step every frame. Take a step, random step, take a step every frame. So this is my pause, add step to it. This is my pause, add step to it. But let's see what happens when I run this. Nothing. So JavaScript doesn't even give me an error message. It's just like, eh, eh, eh. Uh. So the reason why this doesn't work is JavaScript doesn't know what to do with this plus and these values. Okay, It knows how to do 2 plus 3. That's 5. 10 plus 7 is 17. I could keep going. I could do addition. I'm very proud of myself. <clears throat> it also knows how to do plus with strings. Uh, rain plus bow is rainbow. But it doesn't know how to do plus with uh, vectors. And some programming environments allow you to overload. The term is overload. Overload an operator and tell the programming environment how to do it with a plus sign, how it, how it works. But, um, but P5 doesn't have, JavaScript doesn't have that. It, there's ways around that, but so easily. So the way that I need to add a step to pause is by looking at the P5 vector documentation. And you'll notice there's a function called add. So I could just say pause.add step. So once I say this is a function add that's part of the vector library, I want to add the step vector to pause. OK, and now I'm going to hit refresh, and we can see there we go. Now, this is actually doing something quite different than the previous 
um, video because it's using floating point math. And if, if I look at where the pause is right now, you can see that it's at this number. Now, one thing to note is that, um, you know, there are no actual, there's no like 213.84 pixel. So when you say to draw at that number, the browser, the operating system is going to sort of figure out what to do. Sometimes it just like takes off the decimal place. Sometimes it does some kind of what's called sub pixel rendering by kind of using some alpha values to make it it's like the illusion of it in between pixels. But we don't really need to worry about that too much. You can see the quality of what we're getting is essentially the same. Um, and now what I want to do is add the idea of a Levy flight to it. So uh, at a future, t at some point I would love to discuss a variety of ways that we could control the probability of the step size. Right now, ask yourself, what is the step size? What is the step size? You can pause the video to try to answer it. The step size right now, it, I, which I mentioned a few times, is actually one. So random 2D gives you by definition what's called a unit vector, meaning the length of that vector is one. But I could always change that length. I could say step dot multiply by five. That takes the vector and scales it up times five, makes it five times as long. And if I do that, you'll see, whoa. Did I not hit save? I did not hit save. Now you'll see, look what's happening there. Oh, I've definitely got something I've got to fix with this that I just noticed. You can see that the step size is bigger and the dots are further apart. So incidentally, let's fix this issue right now. I want to see a line from one spot to another now that the steps are so big. When it was only one, the points would always appear next to each other. So to do that, I want a variable called previous, and I'm going to say previous equals pause.copy. So this is kind of an interesting thing. Because these are objects, they have the, the vector object has built into itself, not all objects have this, a function called copy, which creates a copy of it. I don't want to say previous equals pause, because that way if I change pause, previous changes, they're actually pointing to the same data. I want to make a copy. So I want pause and previous to both be a copy at the same spot. And then what I want to do is draw a line between pause.x, pause.y, and previous.x, previous.y. Then, before I change the step, before I add step to pause, once again, I want to say previous equals pause.copy. Now, this is actually kind of a bad idea. Probably doesn't matter, but I'm sort of unnecessarily creating new objects over and over again. So in this case, I think what I actually want to do is say previous.set pause. And I think what that will do is just say set the values of previous to pause. The reason why I couldn't do that up here is because previous didn't exist yet. So copy makes a new vector and the set function just takes an existing vector and kind of copies the values over into it. I think this will work. So let's see now what we get. We can see now it's connected with a line. I guess I have an alpha in here that I didn't notice. Let's take that out. So you can see it's connected with a line and I could just change the step size now to like 25. And we could see, look, a random walk is making really big steps now, 25 steps. And then I could say, hey, what if I make this a random value, the, a random step between 1 and 25? Now what you'll see is the step size is actually random. So in order to complete the Levy flight, what I need to do, I need to have a probability of, I need to have it be most likely that it's going to take a small step, but every once in a while take a big step. And I'm going to do that in a kind of quick and dirty way, which is um, just to say, let me pick a random number. Var r equals random 100. So this is a nice way, and you don't have to use a range from 0 to 100, but this is a nice way to uh, implement probability in your code. What if I want there to be a 5% chance of something happening? Well, if I pick a number between 0 and 100, that number is going to be less than 5, 5% 5 of the time. I could have done this by saying random 1 and say 0 0.05. But just for readability right now, I'm going to say random 100. So let's just say there's a 5% chance of taking a step that is actually some that is actually 25 pixels. So it's always going to pick, make a vector that is one step. And this, by the way, is making a new vector every frame, but big deal. That's a unit vector, but 5% of the time it's going to go 25. So let's look at this, and we can see we've now got this leading light. Now, 5% is actually kind of often. You can see, and 25 pixels is maybe not that long. So maybe what I'm going to do is actually make that step randomly between 25 and 100. And I'm actually going to make it just 1% of the time. And so now we're going to see, um, and, and maybe what I actually want to do is always, um, 
make the step size. And by the way, there's a function called set mag. So what might um, set magnitude, because right now, because its unit vector is 1, if I multiply by 10, I get its magnitude of 10, because 1 times 10 is 10. But if its magnitude was like 15, and then I wanted it to be 10, I would have to divide it by 15 and then multiply by 10. So there's actually a function called set mag, mag which set the magnitude, which I can do. I'm going to just set it to 2, just to, so its native sizes are a little bit bigger. And now you can see we've got the Levy flight, the, the Levy flight. So this is one variation. I, you know, what, what kind of ideas could you have in terms of color and design or adding a narrative to this um, that you might explore or changing the probabilities? Now, ah, there we go. Oh, there we go. So now you can see these like large steps. Um, and so explore this, play with it. If you make something with it, um, the, the code from this video will be linked um, um, in the description. If you make something with it, share it with me on Twitter at Shiftman or share it in the comments. And I, I try to at least read and, and go through all the comments. Um, you know, generally once a day, I'm kind of like checking them and reading them and enjoying them. So thanks for tuning in to this second random walk, Levy Flake video.